The ability to take a loan against your whole life insurance policy is one of the most powerful assets and leverage components that you have inside of your whole life policy. Now, a lot of people believed that you could borrow money from other investment accounts like a 401k. Been getting a lot of comments from uh, clients and people who have uh, been watching the videos lately that, you know, no big deal. You could just borrow from your 401k, you could borrow from other assets, uh, and it's the same thing. Well, it's not. Most people don't realize or understand the power of how whole life insurance loans work. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at a 401k and I'm gonna talk about uh, a, a whole life policy and I'm gonna break down the differences in how the loans work when borrowing from your 401k or borrowing against your whole life insurance policy. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell that way you're notified every time I launch a new video. Let's get into this. Hey, what's going on, cash flow hackers? It's Chris with Life 180. In this video, we're talking about the differences between 401k loans and whole life insurance policy loans. Now, um, there are a lot of different nuances to the different things. So I thought the, the, the best way to handle this is because what people typically understand is more about 401ks. And I think this is obviously the idea of utilizing whole life insurance for a lot of people is kind of out there. Um, and, and maybe it's kind of a second level way of thinking. It's an alternative way of thinking. And so what I want to do is I want to just cover 401k loans. And then what we'll, we'll do is we'll have a conversation about whole life insurance policy loans as I'm educating about the 401k loan, because I think that's just the easiest and the cleanest way to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my trusty board and we are going to have a little fun. So you can see here, policy loans. All right, let me, let me get into this. So uh, 401k policy loans right here. You can see 401k policy loans. Every ESP is employer sponsored plan. That's what a 401k is, has different rules. So it's important to understand that not every 401k is going to be the same, right? And so um, what does that mean? Uh, not every 401k is the same. Every employer has a different set of rules inside of, of the uh, 401k account. Now, principally speaking, this is an important rule. This is where the rules really start with a 401k. You can borrow up to 50% account balance with $50,000 max in a 12 month period. Now, this doesn't mean that's what you're able to do. Once again, you have to check with your employer sponsored plan and you have to see how, what the rules are in that. But as far as the government is concerned, you can borrow up to 50% of your account value, uh, account balance, and uh, have 50,000 in uh, uh, max loans for a 12 month period, right? So there are limitations there. And so that is, I would say, one of the first cons when you start looking at policy loans or you start looking at 401k loans is the fact that you have this $50,000 max. Anytime there's a max on the regulation of what I can and can't do with my money, um, then obviously I think to me that that's a con. I would say that um, I understand why they made the rule because it's all about trying to get people to act in their own best interest. It's about trying to have the discipline and the future uh, for retirement planning when it comes to um, when it comes to making sure that you're not taking too much away from your future. And so I understand the concept of what they're going for there, but I would also say that, um, you know, I'm never a fan of the government positioning themselves that they're smarter than us. I believe, you know, it's freedom. We should have to be able to do with our money what we want. And, uh, and so that's that. Now let's go through some pros of, of 401k loans. Um, there's no tax or penalty on loans. I think that's uh, an important thing to understand that having no taxes and no penalties on loans is, is a real big benefit of, the, of these policies or of these plans. They have competitive interest rates when you borrow against them. It's a good thing, right? Like uh, rates are going up right now. Granted, loan rates on 401k loans are going up as well, but they're going to be competitive based on what the market environment is offering. There is no credit check. Remember, the money is there, it's yours. They're guaranteeing that loan and they're backing it up by the account value that you have in your, uh, in your 401k. Now, I'm gonna get into that, uh, but here's the other thing is they don't show on your credit report. There's no credit check and they don't show up in your credit report. These are two areas, these two 
the no showing up on your credit report and having no credit check, these are two areas that is very, very similar to a whole life insurance policy loan. In fact, that's one of the, one of the things that we tout about a whole life policy loan that is very, very uh, beneficial. With a whole life policy loan, there is no credit check. There is no, um, uh, there's no um, reporting that, that happens with it. Um, but the bottom line is um, it's structured. I, I got this, uh, a 401k loan is structured, whereas uh, a whole life insurance policy loan, whole life is unstructured. Right, so it's 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 important to understand the difference between these two things because uh, you know you take a policy loan against your whole life insurance policy, you no credit checks, you have guaranteed access to the money that you have in there, you have access in a whole life policy to a hundred or I wouldn't say a hundred percent because that's not accurate. You can get lines of credit that will give you access to up to a hundred percent of your. Um, money and you have to use a third party bank, but if you want to use a policy loan provision with a life insurance company, you can have access to about 90% of the net cash value. So whole life insurance is going to, is going to get you more than the 50% that we have here. Um, whole life insurance is going to have no cap on this $50,000 cap, right? So that's important to say you could borrow as much as you want or need based on, you know, if you find a real estate opportunity, if you find something else, if you want to do a complete remodel and overhaul of your, uh, of your house or something of that nature, you can do that. A lot of times 50K isn't going to do the job. Um, and it's on, and whole life insurance is unstructured versus structured. Now, um, the cons to, and I'm going to go back to uh, 401k, the cons are you need to pay it very fast if you leave a job. So, um, if you have a 401k loan outstanding and you lose your job or leave your job proactively, maybe for another job opportunity, one of the negative parts is it becomes a little bit like golden handcuffs in the sense that like, if you leave, you have to pay this loan back fast. And if you don't pay it back fast within a certain time frame, then you would be subject to a default on the loan, which would equal taxes and penalty that would need to be paid. And that can be a really negative consequence. It can have uh, its own, uh, I guess, negative result, right? Like that, that are not going to be in alignment with what your goals and objectives are. Um, the other thing is, and this is a big one, if you borrow money from your 401k, you are not earning while that money is being borrowed. That money is, that growth is interrupted. So I'm going to use this example here. If you borrow, if you had a uh, you know, let's say, let's say you had a, an account value of 50,000. What are the rules? Let's run a little case study here. $50,000 account value. I'll just do AV. You could borrow up to 50%. But what does that mean? Can you borrow up to 50%? Here's the deal with the 50%. It's not just, Hey, I can get $25,000. That's not how it works. Even though that's what it would look like. You have to take it out and they're going to assume they're going to give you your borrowing rate based on the assumption that you're going to default on that loan. So what do they do? They say, all right, uh, if you have $50,000 and you borrow, let's, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say you borrow 20,000. Well, what would, let's say there's a 10% penalty. Uh, if there's a 10% penalty, and let's say you're paying 15% uh, in taxes, just for the sake of it. That's a little low, but I'm just trying to keep numbers really round. You have to understand, I'm just trying to teach a principle here. Um, so a 10% penalty on the 20,000 is 2,000, right? And the 15% is 3,000. So now, what do we have? Uh, 2K, 3K, 20 plus 2 plus 3 is 25K. And that is 50%. So the most you could borrow in this instance, if you had a $50,000 account value, the most you could borrow with this, with these assumptions of 10% penalty and 15% taxes for you, the most you could borrow is $20,000. And so that's very limiting. Now, whereas in a whole life policy, if you had $50,000 of what we'll call net cash value, you could have access to 90% of that which is $45,000. And so this is the power of utilizing uh, whole life insurance as a foundational asset, because I'm a big believer. We need to make sure we save an emergency fund. Um, as we do this, here's the deal. 
as we do this, this $25,000 that we've borrowed and, and kind of set aside, you're not earning any rate of return on it. You're paying interest on it. Um, you're gonna have an interest rate that you pay and you're not earning any rate of return. Whereas if I took a $45,000 loan in a whole life policy, I may pay 5%, but the cash value, uh, I'm gonna pay 5%, but the net cash value is gonna grow, uh, continues to grow, I should say. So it continues to grow, right? So when you look at this, um, the net cash value continues to grow by, let's just call it a four and a half to five and a half percent range. Now, the one thing I'll say here is this number is a little confusing. And the reason it's confusing is because a lot of people like to say, oh, well, you're, and, and I think this is one of the big things about infinite banking that is, is misleading a lot of times. A lot of people like to say, well, if you can pay 5%, like we'll say pay 5% and uh, keep earn, earning, uh, let's say, uh, like, uh, let's say five and a half percent dividend, then, you know, that obviously goes, okay, I got a half a percent of positive arbitrage, right? Because I'm earning five and a half and I'm paying five. Well, that's not really how it works. I mean, you know, cause this is depending on how old the policy, how mature it is. I would say this is gonna be how, this is gonna be really clean and pretty much how it works. Once you get year seven or eight in the policy, um, then, then this conversation becomes real. But I think one of the areas that people kind of fall down and are miseducated about how infinite banking works is if you do this in year one with your whole life policy, this 5.5% dividend is not a net dividend. You're still going to have the cost of insurance and all these other things that come out of the policy. And it's going to be more like a 4%. So you're still going to be, you're going to wind up being negative because that, that is like negative 1%, right? But at the end of the day, you never interrupt this money, this growth, right? So that's a really powerful thing. And what you have happening there is, uh, you know, as you pay it back, this money becomes recapitalized. And it'll be, it'll be worth more uh, when, when it's all paid back, when the loan is paid back. Whereas when you pay the loan back over here, you just, that money has not been working for you. You have an additional expense and it is what it is. Um, and let's say you're paying 5%. Well, there's always a cost of money. That cost of the money is that 5% if that's what you're borrowing at. Now over here, if you're paying 5%, the net cost of the money, even if you're only earning this 4%, the net cost of the money is only 1% because five minus four is one. So even though you're paying 5%, right? And you're earning 4%, well, even if you're losing money, it's still more efficient. And I could show you ways that um, you could earn negative arbitrage here and the account value is still gonna grow uh, more because it's a concept of compounding interest at 4%. Like example, year one, if I pay, if I have a hundred thousand dollar loan and I earn and, and I'm earning 4% here, that means I'm going to have 104,000 at the end of the year because I've earned 4%. If I paid 5%, well, now I'm going to have interest on that. So I'm going to have to pay the interest, but I'm also going to pay down some principal. And as I pay down principal, well, next year I'm going to be paying 5%, but I'm going to be paying it on a smaller number, maybe 96,000, maybe 95,000, maybe 90,000. I don't know. It depends on how much pay principal you pay down, but now I'm going to be paying 5%. Let's call it 90,000, 5% on 90,000. Whereas I'm going to be earning 4% on 104,000, right? So it's not clear when you talk about compounding versus amortizing debt, those differences come into play. And this is the power of leveraging loans inside of whole life insurance policy. It increases your financial efficiency. That's why I'm not a big fan of borrowing uh, from your 401k because there are risks that go along with it that people don't typically understand. Um, and uh, honestly, I'm just not a big fan of putting yourself in that situation. Plus, let's face it, you shouldn't use, like what happens a lot of times when people need money, if you have 50,000 in an account, a lot of times when people need money for emergencies and if you're leaning on your 401k for emergency, uh, it's a problem because when you need that money, typically the account value is down. It's in hard years, times are tough, all that stuff. And, and you're looking to access extra capital for whatever reason. And uh, you never want to do that with a negatively performing asset at the time. And so doing that is challenging. But because of the fact that whole life insurance is guaranteed and has a lot of features 
that a bank account does as far as the guarantees and the liquidity goes, um, you can use that as, as a great emergency fund alternative. In fact, I would argue that a uh, properly designed whole life insurance contract when, when looked at and designed properly is, uh, is effectively an emergency account on steroids because it's gonna get your dollars doing more than one thing for you. Uh, and, and you have this leverage and there's a lot of other ways that you can use it. And those are, I'm going to save that for another video, but I wanted to do this because I think it's really important for you to understand all the pros and the cons of a 401k loan, how they work, the difference between a 401k loan and a whole life insurance policy loan, how you can set your life up to kind of take advantage and not be in a position where you have to take a 401k loan, but utilize a whole life policy as an emergency fund for yourself. And honestly, then just go from there. It becomes pretty simple. So um, if you have any questions about that, any comments, go ahead and comment in the comment section below. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video. And uh, as always, have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.